Hey, what's up? This is Sergey with another quick tutorial. I do hope this is gonna be quick. Uh, so, uh, actually, one day I was looking outside my window and I noticed that hmm, there's a lot of snow suddenly from nowhere. And I recall that in some cartoons, maybe it was Pixar, uh, there was a shot, establishing shot, uh, with a huge tree full of vibrant colors and leaves. And the next shot is the same tree with almost no leaves, naked branches. So this were supposed to indicate a uh, passing of time. And I thought that's actually an interesting uh, idea for a tutorial, so that if you could qu very quickly assemble something like in 15-20 minutes and show it to a supervisor or lead as a proof of concept, like, hey, this is how the tree will change over the season change. Uh, and so I assembled this uh, pretty simple setup. So I'm going to use a Karma, but it's work with Mantra as well. Actually, any other render engine, you just have to account for uh, a shady network. So let's actually turn it on. And that we will see that, hey, this is this is this tree during the winter. And then we switch the input to initial geometry that I just exported from speed tree. And there you have it, the normal proper summer looking tree. And it's very nice that you could actually zoom in, zoom out uh, while using Karma, <laughs> especially. And very quickly to estimate, okay, this is how tree looked when I imported it, and this is how it will look during the winter season, which is nice. I mean, there's no fancy volumetric snow here for now. I didn't want to bother with displacement or VDB conversions to generate the fully realistic winter look, but very, you know, at a glance, it looked, especially at a distance, looks nice. So let's try to reassemble that one from scratch so that you guys could follow along. Uh, and I'm gonna just go up here. I'm gonna save my scene just in case. Uh, for this particular example, we're gonna be using speed tree. So you will have to have speed tree importers who speed things up. You could get it from actually a folder of speed tree that you install locally. I'm gonna delete everything from here and we do it from scratch. So I'm gonna use speed tree importer. Just gonna drop it over here and I'm gonna point to my speed tree file. There's a prompt pops up that asks you whatever shader network you want to use. For our particular scenario, we're going to use principled, but you could use whatever. Uh, the mantra will just create classic shader color instead of principled. Renderman obviously going to be suited for Renderman shader network. If you have V-Ray or uh, Redshift installed, it should give you an option to pick those ones. We're going to use principled. It's going to do its own thing. So it brought things up in here. I'm going to quickly switch to manual. Uh, the thing that I don't like about this import, it generates this alembic structure that I don't like. So it's like folder within a folder within a folder. We're going to correct this very quickly by dropping geometry node. We're going to call this tree and we're going to drop a mat network. And when I call it actually matnet one is fine. Then I'll just dive inside. I'm going to grab those materials really quickly. I'm going to just drop it over here. So this is where you're gonna go. they're going to leave from now on. And I'm going to do the same thing for the geometry. As you can see, it's like needlessly convoluted and I don't really like that. I'm just going to copy paste it here. We're going to delete this guy from here. And the only thing left to do to make sure it works is that we have to relink the materials. Uh, there is no quick way of doing this, but we know for a fact that they live in matnet two folders above. So as you can see, yeah, it just prompts me to put this one there. So let's do that for all the materials very quickly and hopefully they will work and we're going to check it with you right away. Okay, going to go up, going to save, going to switch from manual to auto. And I think the tree was pretty huge, so I'm just going to scale it down just a bit so that we uh, see more branches. Okay, so there's two steps that we need to do. First one is to adjust the geometry to accommodate loss of foliage, well, not a foliage, the canopy actually. Uh, and the second one is the shader update so that we could decolorize the leaves and make sure we have fancy snow around the branches. So let's do the first one. Uh, first, we're actually gonna drop switch node over here so that we could switch between our uh, modes of seasons. Uh, uh, let's just call it out tree. All right. Uh, now let's drop a blast note. We're gonna remove everything that is not bark, right? 
gonna call it trunk so that we know what's what and we're gonna do the same one for the tree leaves and I'm just gonna grab one of those let's call it leaves Ugh. yeah okay cool so we've done this the problem with this one is uh, well we need to have a control over how many leaves we're gonna remove because maybe you want very few, maybe you want none, but maybe you want a, a lot of, like maybe you're doing something in between. Uh, for those of you who really don't like Vex, I could only suggest probably using for each, but it's gonna be that much longer because it's so much slower. And I promise you it's gonna be a just mid school grade coding. So it shouldn't be a problem for you. Uh, I'm gonna drop Wrangler. Uh, so basically the idea that we're gonna go over every leaf and just remove it based on a certain percentage that we want to keep. I'm gonna switch to primitive. Actually, one more thing. Uh, it could work right away for you if your leaf represents with just being represented with just one polygon. But there's a there could be a case of leaf being formed with several polygons, and then we have to do one extra step just in case. But then later on, you could replicate this approach with almost any tree. So let's just drop connectivity. Uh, this node will generate for every single primitive attribute class. That means that if attribute, well, if primitives are closely connected together, they're going to have the same class. So now we only need to sort our primitives to make sure they are connected based on this attribute. So we're just going to call it class here. And if I select it over here and go to geometry spreadsheet, you see that our class is basically corresponds to the latest uh, number of the primitive. So now let's do our middle school uh, coding. Uh, unfortunately, you can't use ChatGTP just yet for, for Vex. I tried it just out of curiosity, but it just generates weird, unnecessarily complex structure. Maybe you could use it for Python. For that, you could check out Andrew and Lambert's video on how to use GDP and Python and Houdini. Anyway, uh, let's just quickly generate our first variable that is i, is integer, and it's going to give us the amount of primitives on our geometry, just so we know how many are there. But the problem is that it gives us a actual number, and it starts from 1. You can't have zero polygons. So that means we have to subtract 1 just in case, because indexes, indices rather for polygons start with 0. Uh, then we're going to create another variable called, well, it's not called anyway, I'm just going to call it max class. They're going to give us the class of the late, latest, uh, well, the last, the biggest on number scale polygon. So we're going to use prim, which is just, as you can see from prompt, gives us the attribute from our geometry. We need the attribute class. And from last primitive, which is i, essentially. And you can just double check whether it works for you or not. I'm just, instead of this, I'm just gonna put this one. That's actually gonna create attribute. And so you could see that our max class corresponds to the latest biggest class attribute value in our spreadsheet. So that means it works properly, which is nice. So the only thing left to do is for us to generate a condition for our, uh, well, basically for our po polygons. So we need to make sure that we go over every primitive and if the class attribute of our current primitive that we currently going over is less than, for example, certain value based on max class, we're just going to remove it. So if our class from our current primitive, which we could refer to as primnum, is less, let's just say that 50% right of our max class we're gonna do the following and the following is we're just simply gonna remove the primitive we're gonna remove primitive from the first input which is we're gonna refer to our primitive current primitive with this index of prim num and we're gonna remove all the points as well look so if you put zero it's gonna be means that the points will remain one it will remove all the points bam uh, and I yeah sorry uh, 
What was I saying about mid-grade uh, thing? Well, it's just me. Give me a hint. Expecting... Oh, sorry, yeah. Not... Yeah. <laughs> Woo! That was, a, that was a close one. Anyway, <laughs> now you can see that this thing works. Obviously, this uh, value here is going to be a bother to manually adjust it. So let's just create uh, a slider for it. So we're going to introduce our, this time, float with for more precision uh, variable. I'll call it th for threshold. And they're going to be equal to maximum class multiplied by our channel that we're going to generate right now. I'm going to call it threshold. Ugh. Threshold. Bam. And here I'm just going to put th. I'm just going to generate it over here. And so now you could see that we have very easy way of controlling how many leaves are being removed. So let's just put it like 96%. Let's see it actually how it looks with a tree. Maybe it's even Let's put it 97. Yeah, I think that's that's about right for now. Uh, so let's just grab that material. Grab it over here. We need to make sure we only keep bark and leaves. So we're going to delete everything else. Plug it over here. Uh, then I'm going to go like this one is finished geo side. So now we're going to go and adjust shaders. I'm going to save just in case. I'm going to alt drag bark material to create a copy and do the same one for leaves and let's actually start with leaves first because that's going to be so much easier i'm going to unlock editing content I'm going to dive inside here so the only thing we need to do for those ones is basically just change the color values for it so we're going to drop color correction and i'm going to put it right on top of the existing base color so we're going to desaturate it slightly and shift it towards being more yellowish. Uh, let's actually launch the render right away so we can see. I'm just going to rewire them to mat1. Okay. Okay. This one switched to first input. And so if I bring back our karma render, that should give us exactly what we want, which is, as you can see, yellow leaves, no other canopy segments left. Okay, cool. So last step is to create indicator where the snow will be. Yeah, I'm just gonna unlock this one real quick as well. If you already have snow shader, good for you. I'm not gonna be reassembling from scratch here because snow is <laughs> a totally different topic on its own. It could dedicate a separate tutorial for that if you want. But I'm going to drop just principal shader here. Uh, we're going to... Actually, for control purposes, I'm going to create color correction over here so that we could tint it red, plug it here. And for now, I'm going to replug it over here. So completely overriding the trunk shader so that just we could see what's going on. Let's kick off Karma again. Now everything is red. Great. Let's grab gl global variables. Uh, this way we get access to all the uh, attributes that we need, like position, normals, blah, blah, blah. Uh, for different render engines, it could be different. For example, in V-Ray, you have uh, V-Ray Sampler, is, if I remember, which, but the principle is pretty much the same. So you probably already know what I'm going to do next, is I'm going to create a constant vector that points upward. Switching to vector, switching to one, and then we're going to use dot product. I'm going to grab normals, plug it here. This vector we're going to plug here. And we're going to put a snippet. The snippet is basically equivalent of the expression node in any other render engine, as far as I know. So we have variable that is highlighted here, which is dot product. So we just specify the condition if our dot product is, let's just say for now, less than 0.5. We're going to do the following, and the following is, which is equal to zero, basically. We don't need to do any fancy stuff for now. I'm going to put a null here. We're going to call this null mask. I'm going to plug it here so we keep consistent. 
and then we're just gonna multiply one over the other. Bam, karma is still calculating by it basically, which is nice. So now, as you can see, we have nice uh, indicator of where the snow will be. I can actually switch it to white. And I think V-Ray has like V-Ray snow just for that. But I think having an expression enables you to do so much more with it. For example, let's just say you don't want it to be a straight line because it does look weird. Uh, what we're going to do is dra grab, grab, is there such a word? I don't know. We're going to grab turbulent noise over here. I'm going to plug it into position here. Also be careful, sometimes you need to make sure that position is actually in object space. So you don't, you know, if you're unsure, just drop transform node. So you can transform from whatever space was before to object space. That way your noise wouldn't move with the motion of the camera. We're going to switch to sparse convolution. For now, we're going to put 10, 10, 10 everywhere. Maybe we're going to win something for a change. Now we have additional attribute, well, not attribute, they actually a variable here that called noise. We're going to keep condition as is here. We just have to adjust our dot product with our noise. Basically, we need to add it. I'm going to put plus equals means that we're going to equalize dot product to itself plus the noise that we see here. And that way, now when the karma recalculates, you see that we have very nice pattern across the all the branches and trunk, which is nice because it looks so much more natural. You can go further with this. I'm just going to do a quick example of how you can perfect this even further and have additional control. I'm just going to drag, copy the noise. I'm going to put some something like this. So, and then we're just going to multiply our output from snippet with this noise. Uh, the problem is it's not very contrasty, so let's just drop fit range here. And we're just gonna, I don't know, do something like that. Maybe just make it sure it's more even. I do like even numbers. Yeah, so now as you can see, if we adjust noise here, we have more interesting breakups here and there. Depends how detailed you want it. But actually, that will be your, let's just call it breakup, additional means of control. For this particular example, I do prefer to have more evenly distributed snow. Uh, and sometimes this one doesn't recalculate, so I have to plug it directly here. Nevertheless, you will have this option over here. So, okay, cool. I'm going to stop Karma for now. I'm going to save my scene just in case. Uh, also, by the way, this will work in uh, Mantra as well. So as you can see, I can just hit render and we'll get the same outcome pretty much, which is nice, meaning if you're unsure what to render with, uh, this approach being universally based on geometry and math will work anywhere, essentially. So yeah, you see we have now our black and white mask over here. So basically we've just tackled the mask creation. Uh, I'm gonna disable this one completely here. The only thing left to do is actually layer two materials on top of another, like one above another, A over B. That's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to drop, drop, oh, my English is perfect, uh, drop layer composite. I'm going to plug this layer over here. Then I'm going to grab our mask, plug it into A as mask. Actually here, maybe we could just reduce the roughness so that we see some spec traveling across it. Um, oh, actually this is, yeah, I forgot this is how speed tree importer assembled this whole thing. We have to pack and pack, I mean, depends on the render engine that you use, but here we will have to pack and pack the layers properly. So let's first pack it. So we're gonna grab, because this used some weird mixing over here for a subsurface, I guess. I'm gonna grab this one here. We could grab this one from here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah. And I'm going to plug it over here. And after layering is done, we're just going to unpack it back and then just plug to wherever. I mean, I'm just following the structure of what's going on here so that we make sure we're consistent with what we do in our shading network. 
but I prefer just replace with just both principal shaders instead of using principal shader core. Although it does much faster, so. Okay, and then we just grab and plug this one over here. Cool, so now this should work. Let's kick up mantra, karma, whatever. And this way we'll see our snow popping up on top of our trunk, which is nice. So now we can go back and switch back and forth and see how does it look. Well, it's pretty much as it I expected. And we almost completely done it under 20 minutes, which is great. Since this setup is pretty fairly procedural, it just depends on what the group names here and uh, materials that you have to relink. You could quickly do several trees and place it elsewhere, generate the whole forest with instances and then switch them from winter time to summer to autumn to whatever you want basically uh, especially if they're at a, at a distance so if i zoom in or well, zoom out rather by quite a lot then when we switch it i would say that will be enough for you. you don't need to fancy displacement and snow accumulation to sell the idea so that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching if you made this far please leave your comments below with any questions that you have and maybe some ideas that I can do further uh, with my tutorials. I do have free time on my hands, fortunately now, so uh, let me know how it goes. Thank you very much. Surge is out, cheers.